Hello everyone and welcome back to GDB World. In today's video we will be taking a look at the basics of how to use the spline and path nodes found within Substance Designer 13.0 and above. While we may touch on the path nodes briefly, our main focus will be the spline nodes themselves. Um, the only path node we'll really look at is usually just one, um, but it just seemed to sort of make sense to sort of populate it to this video. Um, and we'll probably look at addressing path nodes in a bit more in-depth sort of analysis later on. To start us out, we're going to want to have a look at the setup. So to get access to spline and path nodes, you want to make sure that you're on 13.0 or higher version for Substance Designer. To check this, you can go to Help About Substance Designer, and then you should see your version number displayed there. To set up your project, you want to make sure you're using Substance Engine V9. To do this, you can go to Edit Preferences, Projects, Compatibility Display, and then Substance Engine V9. This should be set by default if you've just recently updated, but if you have gone through and changed this due to like a display bug encountered in more one of the more latest versions, then make sure that this is configured. When it comes to finding the spline nodes, it's nice and easy. You can either press the space bar and type spline, or you can refer to the library section under splines and paths, and it will give you a nice display of all the nodes you have available to you. But at this point, you may be noticing there's quite a lot of nodes to choose from. Now to keep things simple, I've grouped these into uh, sections uh, and just picked a few of the more primary nodes you may be interested in using. So to start us out, we've got our creation nodes, followed by our merge nodes. Then we've got our spline manipulation nodes, and then lastly, spline render nodes. Coming back to our creation nodes, let's have a look at them with a bit more detail. So. For the creation nodes, we've got the spline circle, cubic, and quadratic nodes. Each produce points along with a preview with an intersecting spline between them. Within each of the nodes, they offer parameters that can be adjusted to manipulate the shape. Some are common, such as the thickness parameters, and some are unique to that node, such as the spar effect on the circle node. When making adjustments to the creation nodes, you should take note that changes are only reflected within the 2D view when enabled within the preview tab of each node. This is important as the thickness preview is disabled by default. Up next we have the spline merge and combine nodes. You will notice any nodes from this point will have four inputs and can take some time to link individually. To speed this up you can toggle between the one and two key on your keyboard to enable a multiple selection. The spline append node allows you to combine two splines together while the spline merge node sort of merges the beginning of each spline in the chain. And then we have the spline bridge node. This applies a bridging operation between all the points in spline A with spline B, creating a bit of a lattice effect. And next we've got the spline manipulation nodes. So the first node is the spline 2D transforms. Functions the same as the transform 2D, useful for resizing of a spline. And then next we've got the spline warp node, same again as the um, warp counterpart, useful for adding a little bit of variance with your spline. Finally, that brings us to the end of the chain, which is our spline render nodes. The first node is just simply the spline render. So this just outputs the grayscale image created from your spline. And then the next one is your scatter on spline grayscale. This is useful for when you have a pattern that you want to um, spread across the entirety of the spline. All spline render nodes do end of this grayscale output. So it's one way of knowing if it belongs at the end of the chain or in the middle. Um, it does also mean that you're spline is no longer in the coordinate system and it does in fact become an image and so it does allow you to use all the rest of the nodes after this point. With all that being covered let's see how we can then apply our newfound knowledge. So just in front of you here is a spider web. It's a good thing to sort of practice on because you can predominantly make the entire thing just with splines itself. So we'll be using that as our example and create basically the same material just below it um, as a bit of an example to show how to use the nodes. So to start us out, we're going to use the spline poly quadratic node. This is the one of our creation nodes there, and we'll put the points to 10. Make sure we close the spline because we want to make it somewhat circular but maintain those angles. Um, and then we'll decrease that smoothness to negative one. going to duplicate that four times and then you can come in make some slight adjustments um, again it's 
the spider web so it can be a little bit random with how it looks. I'm just going to use the spline transform 2D and we're going to go to the matrix here and manually type in our scale values. So I'm just going to go for a 75 or 0.75 and 0.75 on both um, and then duplicate it and then go down to 50 and then down to 45. Center it as best I can, and then we'll just put it into a frame. And then we can go ahead and start combining these. So we'll just use the append node and add those two together. And I'm just putting another transform in between this one just so I can recenter it because it wasn't quite in the right position. Duplicating nodes where you can just to speed up the flow. We're essentially going to repeat the whole process again, except this time we're going to be looking at aiming to create the smaller rings. Uh, this is then going to be used of our bridging operation. that done we're just going to do another uh, shrink essentially with the transform 2d I'm going to make a really small uh, circle and that's going to be I guess the consolidated knot part of the web and we can move on to appending the center piece with the outer rim and as well as bridging out the leftover details of the web. These ones are just simple with pins, and then I'm just adjusting the uh, positioning, making sure it stays center. And then we can apply the bridging operation. You can see it creates those lines for us. Um, but there's a little bit of a strange effect going on. They seem to be attaching the wrong way around. And that's just basically based on how I, or what order my points line up with the outer rim points. So you can just go ahead and reverse that uh, rotation of the transform 2D. And then it will uh, fix that up for you. It's just a matter of combining the last detail with another append, and then we've got our web. So, basically at this point you can kind of just put it into your output node, so what we'll do is we'll come back up to the original graph so we can work with the original web, um, and we can sort of see the differences between the two that I've sort of covered in today's video. So the first one is just a normal render node, it's pretty basic, um, but does a pretty good job, and it's really good if you're just looking to get those solid lines and you're going to add the details later. Or you can use the scatter along grayscale, which is the one I've used here. And that's really helpful when you've got a pattern that you want to apply to the spline in a directional manner. Now the only thing I will note with it is you've got to be careful with the spacing. Is uh, Sometimes it can sort of be pretty obvious that you're splattering a texture along it. But if you decrease it enough and uh, make sure you change um, the mode to move along the spline instead of the list, sometimes you can get a better uh, blending of the uh, pattern. Uh, this one's pretty simple, it's basically just a fur texture and then applied to it and I've just removed the edges um, to make it a little bit easier to blend. And after that it's essentially up to you what you do next with the web. So what I did, I just scattered it with a tile sort of texture and then um, went with that. but 
don't really need to do that. You can also sort of tweak the spline after the fact and um, get some really cool effects. Last thing I'll mention would be the mask to path node. So this sort of replaces your spline creation nodes and creates a spline based on the mask. But we'll take a closer look at this in a future video. Um, but that about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe and I hope you have a lovely day.